Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the latest Hurricane Tracker app video update recorded Monday evening, August 23rd, 2016 at 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're, we have a lot to discuss this evening, as you can tell from looking at the overview map. So this video will probably run about 10 to 15 minutes, so bear with me. Uh, starting over the eastern Pacific, we still have Tropical Storm K moving away from Mexico. We have a couple of new invests well south of Mexico. We have weakening Tropical Depression uh, Fiona. We have newly formed Tropical Depression 7, which should, should soon become Tropical Storm Gaston here within uh, the next 12 hours or so. And of course, the talk of the town these days is Invest 99L, which will be the highlight of today's video. The latest outlook from the National Hurricane Center shows that Invest 99L has a 40% chance of development within the next 48 hours. They have increased that um, you know, with their latest outlook within the last hour and 60% chance of development within the next five days. Development could occur anywhere in the shaded cone, but over the next few days, we don't ex really expect this to develop. Um, here east of the uh, Lesser Antilles. Once this system gets into the Bahamas and is pulling away from Hispaniola, this is where the atmosphere will be most conducive for this system to organize and possibly strengthen. Chances of this system uh, developing have been increasing through the day as computer models are uh, trending that way and even trending up a little bit on the possibility that this become could become a hurricane and of course we will try to um, discuss that point in this evening's video. Here's the latest infrared satellite loop for Invest 99L. If you tuned in yesterday, you noticed there wasn't uh, anything more than some scattered popcorn type convection and thunderstorms. But overnight and into this morning and through the whole day today, uh, persistent thunderstorms um, were present in and around the broad area of low pressure. It did sustain sustained thunderstorms for most of the day. They did weaken a little bit. And you can see here as we go into the overnight hours, it looks like they are beginning to refire. So that's something we'll keep an eye on over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Here is a graphic of several of the global models that we look at every six hours. And one thing I noticed today, especially when you put all this together, is we have some sort of a trend developing. And, and let me kind of explain what I mean here. Uh, the European model uh, for the past couple of runs has been consistent with a tropical system in the South Florida. The UK MET model, which like the Euro, is a highly reliable model, especially at forecasting tropical cyclone genesis. It has also been consistent with showing a system moving towards South Florida. We have the uh, not always reliable Canadian model, a little further up the coast here over uh, east central Florida. We have our hurricane models, the GFDL, which came on board today, and the H-Wharf model, both of those showing a uh, stronger system a little further away from Florida. But uh, if these runs were extrapolated out uh, based on the steering patterns, which is a high pressure to the north, looks like these, these models would have this storm taken a similar path to the European and the UK Met. Right now we are discounting the GFS. The last several runs is not showing much more than weak vorticity at the 850 millibar around 5,000 foot level. We think there's some issues going on with a trough dipping down over the western Atlantic which could cause some dry air and so the GFS is uh, it's forecasting that the environment's not going to be as favorable as these other models. But when you have all these other models showing, you know, pretty much the same thing to, to some point, uh, you have to kind of throw out that one loan model um, that is very different. So that's what we've kind of seen today in the models. So I am seeing a trend more towards South Florida. I'm seeing fewer members and fewer models turning the system away from the United States. So over the next, uh, you know, one one to five days, we do expect this system to continue to move off towards the west northwest, um, with a bend more towards the northwest, and then um, it, that should put it somewhere in the vicinity of the southeastern Bahamas, about the five to six day mark. At this point, it does appear that it's going to avoid um, Puerto Rico, especially the mountains here over Hispaniola, which are notorious for hindering a, a tropical wave that's trying to develop. 
Now, if you last year remember, we tracked Tropical Storm Erica. Uh, the models kept showing the system recurving east of Florida, and then eventually the system took a more westerly track, crossed Hispaniola, and the um, circulation was disrupted. So, while that is still a possibility, it's uh, looking more likely this is going to track north of the islands. The latest GEFS ensemble, which you put uh, many members of the GFS model suite together. Uh, they're just initialized a little differently. Uh, but the past few runs, we were seeing uh, some of these members go more towards the north and northeast. But over the last cycle or two, we're seeing more and more members with that west-northwest hook across Florida and even some into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So putting everything together, we do expect this to remain an invest, maybe briefly open up uh, into an open wave here uh, just north of the islands. Once it starts pulling away from uh, Hispaniola, we could see it develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm. Uh, this could even happen a little bit sooner if this is able to organize a little further over the next couple of days. Uh, once we get into the uh, this weekend and early next week, uh, it is possible we could have a tropical storm. And let me rephrase that, a strengthening tropical storm uh, somewhere in the Bahamas east of Florida. At this time, we cannot rule out 81 track over the other. They're all still on the table. Uh, we could still see a weakness open up here in the West Atlantic. If that were to occur, uh, I could see a path for this system out to sea. But again, models are trending away from that. Uh, and again, they're trending more towards a track across West Florida, possibly even into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. That looks to be the, you know, while it's not the forecast by any means, that looks to be the most likely um, outlook um, at this time. And of course, there's still a high amount of uncertainty. Uh, so let me throw that disclaimer in there. Again, if you if we throw out the GFS and we look at the other models as a whole, you know, we see a, a really good environment actually for this system to strengthen if it is able to organize into a uh, tropical cyclone. Here's the European model in about six days from now. Um, one of the main driving features is going to be a developing area of high pressure, a strong high pressure ridge. Winds flow clockwise around the high pressure. So if we did have a developing system underneath the high, it would likely be pushed west across central to south Florida into the Gulf of Mexico. If you look over here to the right of this image, we see a very strong Hurricane Gaston, which will become the third hurricane of the season. And you can see if this storm is a little further west than modeled, it could break down the southeastern portion of this ridge and could allow opening if we have a strengthening storm for this to go out. But it, it is appearing less likely that uh, Gaston will get any further west uh, than what's being shown in the recent month runs of the models. Now there's always a chance this high pressure ridge could break down quicker than forecasted, not be as strong as forecasted, and that could result um, you know, in some different tracks further west into the Gulf of Mexico, further north to, to the Carolinas. So until the models really have a good handle on this high pressure ridge and exactly where Gaston's going to track. And let me also throw in, we've got uh, Fiona's remnants kind of meandering out here as well, but some of the latest data is showing that's not going to be as much of an influence as maybe we thought it was going to be yesterday. So as far as our five-day alert levels, um, not much to be concerned about. We could have this invest bring tropical storm conditions to some portions of the north or northeastern uh, Caribbean islands, but we're not expecting a tropical depression or classified tropical storm, so very low alert levels. But again, once it pulls away uh, from Hispaniola in this area, we have a greater chance of seeing a tropical cyclone form. And again, so we've highlighted this area in the guarded. Uh, I do want to note that any potential impacts to uh, the Gulf Coast, Florida, or the Southeast Coast is outside our five-day alert level window. Um, so right now, we don't have any alerts issued for any portion of the United States. However, if models continue these trends overnight and into tomorrow afternoon, these may need to be spread westward just a little bit. Here's a look at the forecast track for TD7, soon to be tropical storm and eventually Hurricane Gaston. Uh, there is a, a chance this could make a run for our first major of the season. 
Um, it is forecasted to come out here to the open Atlantic, but let me caution you. This is a, a forecast that is, you know, seven, eight days away. Um, as we just saw with Tropical Storm Fiona, it was forecasted, turn my cursor back on, it was forecasted to move out into the north open Atlantic, but now we're talking about it over here. So you folks in Bermuda, um, you know, while there's no immediate threat from Gaston, keep your eye on this system in case model guidance does start trending a little bit further towards the west. It wouldn't take much to, to get you in the crosshairs there of Gaston. All right, so I wanted to get to some of your Twitter questions. Max Garcia, one of our avid followers, what are the chances of a Florida landfall? So we issue a special product in a hurricane tracker app. We do share it on social media at times so we can, you know, get the word out there. If you put everything together, all the ensembles, all the global models, all the tropical models, the mesoscale models, we review everything in depth every six hours, and we try to uh, turn that into uh, a number you know that, that that's relative to what the impact chance would be in your area so the further up the coast you get right now you know north carolina less than one percent chance south carolina a little bit higher five percent um we think this high pressure ridge is gonna, is just going to be too strong um the models have been trending towards a stronger area of high pressure so that would block the storm from going further north up the coast into the mid-atlantic and even the northeast that's all pretty much out of the question. Um, to answer Max's question, obviously right now we put a 12% uh, number on the map for South Florida because of everything we just discussed. And then we could still even see this getting up into Northeast Florida. So we've got a 10% 10 chance there. Obviously the main concern right now is going to be from around Puerto Rico, uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, especially into the Bahamas. Or right now we think there's a one in four chance that this system is going to develop and impact that area. Let me also stress uh, the Gulf of Mexico from eastern Louisiana all the way through the Big Bend of Florida cannot be ruled out. We see anywhere from a two to eight percent chance at this point. Now we will update this every six hours with new data. These numbers may go up or down and we will update that and try to share that as much as possible. So hopefully that answer answers Max's question and still Pounding's question. And then Vault Weather wants to know, could the Euro and HWARF solutions be correct? If you watch the computer models, the 12Z run of the European model and this evening's run of the HWARF model, both pretty much bombed out um, this system. The HWARF bombed out the system here uh, down about 958 millibars, which would be a strong hurricane east of Florida with it moving towards the state while the European bombed it out here in the North, in the Gulf of Mexico near the Big Bend at 949 millibars. So if those were to verify, we, we could see a Cat 2, Cat 3 hurricane. Right now, I don't think that's going to happen. It's not the forecast. But if everything lines up correctly with the atmospheric conditions, given the boiling rocket fuel type water in the upper 80s we have below the storm, if there's no dry air intrusions, there's no upper level lows, uh, there's no troughs of low pressure hindering. If you get the ideal setup, yeah, I'd say there is a 10% chance we could have a major hurricane. Um, but again, that's not the forecast. We don't want that to happen. Um, and, you know, we want this record <laughs> of 10 plus years of no major hurricanes to continue. So sorry the video is long. We had a lot to talk about. Hopefully this answered all your questions. I want to try to make it as in-depth as possible without taking too much of your time. Uh, please help support us. We put a lot of time and effort. This is pretty much we do what we do full time during the summer. The whole goal is to keep you updated, keep you aware, keep you safe. And, uh, you know, please support us if you have an iPhone, an I iPad, and, you know, iOS device in the App Store search for Hurricane Tracker, or you can go to www.hurtracker.com. If you're on Android or a laptop and you don't have an iOS device, there's a link on our website where you can run our app in a web version, whether it be Chrome on your desktop, Safari on your phone, Chrome on your phone, and you get all of our unique products information. And we have a detailed blog post under the latest news section there on the overview, overview page. We'll try to do another video update over the next day or two. And of course, keep you updated as new model comes in, new models come in, but we have a long ways to go. This system is more than a about a week away from any potential impacts and you know the models are going to change. Thank you for watching and have a great Monday evening.